I'm Ian Rush and you're watching the Red Men TV. Hello and welcome to a very festive and upbeat edition of the Red Men TV after Liverpool spank Martin Yoles Fulham side 4 0 at Anfield in the Saturday 5.30 kickoff. Before we talk about the match, let's first have some of your Facebook comments, um, which is an absolute pleasure, pleasure to flick through after last week. Wow. Um, Dylan uh, McLean. So sorry, good start, Paul. Great game. If we could just keep playing like that, we could finish in the top four. Just as for the 96, you'll never walk alone. Mohamed uh, Hanif Khalid. For Liverpool to get a penalty, a man in red needs to be shot in the opposition penalty area. Yeah, no doubt, mate. Absolutely no doubt. Uh, Augustino Julian says, uh, Great to see that we can play good football, and I'm happy to see Downing and Lucas delivering match of the year you'll never walk alone left it late <laughs> um, Rasmus Nordman Agawin's miss of the season we were terrible just kidding <laughs> absolutely amazing performance everyone was boss let's keep this going bring on Stoke yes Ian Chu here's the season to be jolly la 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 Fucking musical, get in. It's been a long time coming uh, uh, that a team had to get whopped. So what if Fulham played bad because we made them look bad at half time? We had some 67% possession that said it all. Did it just, just hope the team keeps pushing on and finish more often like today. Merry Christmas to all from Sydney, Australia. Yes, Merry Christmas here to all from Liverpool. Um, John Thapiath says, looking in retrospect, the defeat against Villa didn't mean anything for us in terms of league position. We would have been in exactly the same position even if we had won. Although we'd have been three points closer to the top. But I take your point. You know what I mean? Ultimately, um, yeah. Okay. Let's um, let's wrap it up. Danny Hare says, "So that's what it feels like to completely dominate and outright win a game. Feels nice, doesn't it? Just doesn't it? Just no. They look fantastic." Um, all, all ye of little faith who thought the sky was falling after the Aston Villa uh, after Aston Villa defeat. Look, what can you say? The fact of the matter is, we were on very much an upward curve up until Villa, and sometimes results are just aberrations. You know what I mean? It's it's weird that a lot of people forget that even the, by the best teams in world football get beat occasionally by someone they shouldn't get beat by. And I don't wish to be disrespectful to Aston Villa because I said at the time I thought that you know they played it well. Um, but look, perfect response. Uh, we were fortunate enough to speak to Brendan Rodgers on on Friday. He sat down with some of the the bigger fan groups, ourselves included, uh, and for an hour, oh, ne oh, nearly an hour and a half, and talked about how, how he felt his Liverpool days had gone so far and his ambitions and what have you. And one thing he said about Villa was, you know, he took it to heart and the play, and he made sure that the players knew how much it was, how embarrassing it was that there were Liverpool fans walking out with 20 minutes to go because they didn't feel we could get back in that game. And you can see it there, you know, the, the, the tempo, the pressing, the desire. Um, considering, again, the, the starting eleven, I think with um, Stuart Downing and Suzo su sort of flanking uh, Suarez, a lot of people thought, oh, fucking hell, here we go. But great, Stuart Downing, my word, what a revelation that man's been the last few weeks as well, you know. And if it is, Playing in his, his more attacking position, we've seen him put coming at left back and do a decent job, you know, in the Europa League as well. He's been fine in that, but um, no, he was great. Uh, Stuart Down, what can you say? Look, the fact of the matter is, has he has he performed to the level that you'd expect from a player, uh, given the price we paid for him and the wages we paid for him and his age and position in the squad? No, God, no. <laughs> of course he hasn't. You'd be ridiculous if you were trying to say otherwise. But, as I said about Joe Cole the other week, if he comes in and does that, he sh you know, if he can come in against the likes of Fulham, teams at that level, and be one of the better players on the park, then fine, keep him. There's no need to sell Stuart down if he can, he, can, he can be an asset like that coming in from the right-hand side. Fantastic, because it, that's how Brendan Rodgers wants to play as well. He wants his inverted wingers so to speak because as he again suddenly said in, in the uh, press conference of the fans you know he likes them to get out the way of the fullbacks basically because you know he likes uh, advanced fullback positions um, but no Stuart Downing got to give credit to the man and you know what I'm going to give him my man of the match so there if you disagree let me know in the comment section if you agree back me back me fuck off in the comment section or tweet me at the Red Men TV um, Steven Gerrard another player who's been singled out you know 
perhaps unfairly in some regards uh, for poor performances. I think we've said, I've said myself, you know, not reached the height that we know he's capable of this season. Fantastic. Look what happens when he gets a chance inside the box. Okay. Technically, he had two. But, you know, that's a 50% conversion rate from inside the box, which is as good as any centre-forward going in the Premier League at the minute. Um, no, great, great to see Stevie back to his best. He controlled the midfield, he sprayed his passes. I think we... We were fortunate in some regards. We've got to remember, Fulham were pretty shit, and they didn't press the ball at all. So it gave us a lot more time on the ball. And, and, and if teams are going to play like that against us, we are going to fucking murder them. And just think, if we had some more clinical forwards on the pitch... Again, no disrespect to Dan, who did have a great game. Um, that could have been five or six or more. You know, that would have been an absolute pace. Then um, I thought everyone, everyone played well. I can't single out anyone who didn't have a, didn't have a good game. A couple of straight passes in there from Lucas, still very much finding his finding his match fitness and form again. But on the whole, I thought he was tidy. Um, yeah, again, Stephen Gerrard back back to form. John Joe Shelby was a was a threat. It was good to see it, uh, what we what we've discussed. Something that we've lacked in that formation is someone who plays in the number 10 role, someone who's looking to get up and support Suarez, even get beyond it. When Suarez vacates the space that the number 9 would normally fill, you need someone to take up that role, and John Joe Shelby, I thought, did that quite well. Caused problems. Again, he still looks very much like he's growing into his legs. He looks a bit ungainly at times when the ball's just a little bit out of his reach, but, you know, 20 years old, definitely a massive prospect. Pepe Reina, back to form as well. One or two little, little hairy moments, but in the day, you know, you, you pay your goalkeeper to keep the ball off the back of the net, and he's done that, and he's made a couple of good, a really good saves as well. Out of that, uh, Mark Swartz has got to get credit, though, in their, in their goal. The one chance where Luis Suarez skinned everyone and ran through. Um, fantastic save from, from Suarez. And, uh, so there you go, being partisan, talking about Fulham players, Bear Mataf, who I question whether we should have signed was dog shit. Um, but that's the way he is, isn't he? You know what I mean? That language style, as they say. He either, he either is world class and scores loads of fucking goals out of nowhere, or just looks lazy as fuck, doesn't he? Um, no, let us know who your man of the match was. Let us know who impressed you past that as well. What do you think of the performance in general? Um, are you happy that we've got, got back to winning ways? Um, again, it makes our home our home form look rather tasty. Um, anyway, uh, I'm going to round up because basically the second I finish this, my Christmas begins. Well, okay, uh, I, I, two, three hours of editing, then my Christmas begins. Um, not strictly due, a two hours drive and then Christmas. Anyway, um, but you came up with so I'm going to wrap up here anyway look shit loads of festive stuff available for you to watch right now and because it is the Christmas festive period we're going to be very nice to you and let loads of freebies go about so do check it out we've got a fantastic sketch with um, Holly Oak star James Sutton which is premier stars and what they want for Christmas uh, fantastic definitely worth watching for the Jordan Henderson bit as well as the uh, sort of fantastically stereotyped Arsene Wenger bit there's how, an hour and 20 minutes of the Brendan Rodgers fans press briefing I strongly urge you at some point over the Christmas period if you're bored sick to death of Brussels sprouts and your family are doing your tits in sit down and watch it it will restore any lost faith you might have in the Liverpool Football Club and the direction they're heading in absolutely phenomenal uh, highlights even Brendan Rodgers commenting on that uh, that picture of him uh, looking down Claire Rook's top the standards here is unbelievable and should be as well when you maintain and when you achieve the things that the great predecessors before me have done then as I said that's that expectancy is something that you can't run away from, you can't hide from it, you've got to embrace it and move on. But I think then how I've been accepted into such a club with those standards and the people and, and the players, that's really, you know, I, I've been really humbled by that. And, and I just think the overall, as I said, the sheer size of the club, uh, you know it's a big club, Liverpool, you know the intensity of it, it's never out of the press every single day. You can't say or do anything or look or whatever, and uh, you, you know, you can't take a glance. Anywhere where you're accused of doing something <laughs> unbelievable, that was another one. Yeah. You know, what I mean, I'm starting to play and I'm trying to do a favour to someone. I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually looking over there, and it's just literally a split second. They are, have come away, and all of a sudden, I'm accused of <laughs> unbelievable. You hold on. I wasn't actually doing that, believe it. Yes, amazing. Um, yeah, check that out. There's also a very, a very special Redman TV Christmas quiz. Uh
Question number one. When was the last time Liverpool played a game on Christmas Eve? You can get the quiz sheets to play along from our website as well. The link will be in the video info. Check all this stuff out. Keep yourself busy over Christmas and uh, subscribers because obviously Christmas falls in an awkward time. Uh, we're going to have a very special Christmas special to keep you there. Uh, to keep you sweet, it should be available Christmas night, uh, Boxing Day morning, barring complication. Uh, anyway, thanks very much for watching. Merry Christmas. Hope to see you all uh, happy. Slightly fatter and merrier with a hopefully Santa's got you all the things you ever wanted uh, including Hopefully a win against Stoke City. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the show this year as well uh, We'll be back mm, if not after Stoke QPR Look forward to it. Anyway, I will. Thanks very much for watching and good night Ta -ra.